Oh, yes. Did you enjoy the sound? Love is such a beautiful thing. That is why you and I are here, right? Because two people met, they fell in love, and something happened, and we were the product. Yes, that is love. What, guys, what would have been? I mean, just imagine the world without love. What would have happened? Well, I just want to welcome you all to the first edition of the Blissful Couples Corner. I'm so excited to have you all here today. Yes, I've been waiting for this moment for so long now. So in this episode, we will be talking all about L-O-V, love. What is this thing? What is love? I'm sure many of you will be asking, okay, um, you'll be trying to define what love is. Can somebody really define what love is? What is the feeling of being in love? Sometimes, you know, I read an article, it said it's like a wind. You cannot see it, you can touch it, but you can only feel it. You know how when you are at the beach and the, the breeze is just, you know, sweeping through your face and you're having this good feeling. That is how love is. Anyways, my name is Soul Angel and you are so welcome to the Blissful Corpus Corner. I am happy to have you here today. And I'm sorry for the late start. We we're supposed to start at 5 p.m. Eastern time, but because of some technical difficulties, that's why we pushed it to 5.30. So sorry, my apologies. And I'm so glad you could have the time to make it here today. We just wanna give a, um, a couple of minutes for some people to join us here. Why, um, you know, because let's just wait for a couple of minutes so some people can join us. Um, Right now we have a few people online. We're still sharing the link. Please go ahead and share the link with your family and friends so they can join us here today so we can have some fun. Today is family talk, right? Family talk. We're going to talk about some things about love, our experiences, when we fell in love, was it love, was it just infatuation? I mean, today is just nothing really serious, but we just want to let it out. Write in the comment what you think love is, and we're just going to go ahead and flow with it, okay? So we're just going to give people some few minutes to connect, guys, okay? Yeah. Yes, we are back right now. Um, before we go ahead, I just want to give a big thumbs up to my coach, Gwendolyn at Gwendy Media. Um, she is the brain or the force behind me being here today. Shout out to you, my dear Gwendolyn. I so much appreciate you for everything you've done. You know how this how did I even come about this? This is this um Talking to people or advising couples has been something that I've been doing for a while. Oh, before I go ahead, guys, I just want to apologize. My voice, you can hear my voice like hoarse. I've been having this. I don't know what happened to my voice. Two weeks ago, I had cough, but right now, I don't know what happened to the voice. But I'm here. I hope you guys can hear me well. I apologize for it if you can't hear me well, but we're going to make this work, okay? So I was saying, I just want to give a little um, history of how I got here. Um, growing up, I've been that kind of person that, you know, I always give advice to my friends, their boyfriends. And when I grew up and I got married, I had, I would just say it's just a divine insight that God helped me and gave me wisdom to, you know, to like kind of help couples. When my friends would come to me or little sisters in church, they'll come to me and tell me some issues they're going through in their marriage and I'll give them advice and they will come back to me and thank me that whatever I told them really helped them. So I was doing this without really knowing that it was a calling or something for me until my pastor had to confirm to me. My pastor told me one day that Solange, that is your ministry. That is something God has called you to do to empower young couples, to talk to them, to help them go through challenges in their marriages, help them to build strong relationships, strong marriages. So that is where it got done to me that, hey, I can really, how can I reach people? How can I make it, you know, make my services 
to reach people everywhere. And lo and behold, I came up with this idea of the YouTube channel. But guess what? I did not know where to start until I met Gwen and she helped me. She put me through it. I, I can tell you, it's not even up to, is it like three weeks or now that we've been working together? And she did this. So I'm so grateful for her. I'm so grateful that she held my hand and she's been on my back every single day. We got to do this. To be honest with you, I was not ready for today. I told her, Gwen, can we just push it next week? She's like, uh -uh. if we push it next week, you're going to still say next week we should push it. So let's do it. Face your fight. And I'm here today. So I'm so thankful for Gwen. Also, I want to give a big shout out to my sister-in-law. Um, of course, my greatest ambassador, Joyce MCJT in Maryland, the most eloquent female MC in the DMV. I give a big shout out to her because she's one of the people that pushed me too. She's always behind me. And she's the one actually that connected me with Gwen. I have not Gwen for a long time, but we did not discuss business. So I'm happy for her. Shout out to all of you who are out there. I'm not forgetting my lovely, humble husband who is always behind me. Dr. Daniel Achinko, I love you, sweetheart, and forever will. That being said, while we are waiting on others to come, please, today, right, we're going to be talking, like I told you, about love. What is love? What is this feeling? So on the comment box, please, just tell me what you think love is. What do you think it is? To you, what is love? We're going to be talking about something else, but just tell me on the comment box, what is it? What do you think is love? How can you define it in your own little language? Can you tell me, can you give me a perfect definition of what love is? You see, the author of love is God himself. There is no greater love than what God has given us. The Bible says that he gave his only, that he so loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only because of son. That whosoever believed in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And it did not end there. His son came and died for us. Jesus died for us, right? For what? Because of love. Can you die for somebody this day? That is what we call unconditional love. There are many types of love. But today, we're going to talk about two types. Agape, which is the, con the, condition, the unconditional love, that you love somebody like yourself. Like what you want to do for you, you will want to do for another person. That is the love of Christ. He loves us equally no matter who we are. Right? We have filial love for our family members, our children, our parents, our sisters. Right? There are so many types of love. I don't want to get into it. But the most important one we're going to be talking about here today. And on this show, The Blissful Corpus Corner is what? Who can guess? Write on the comment box, who can guess? That is what? Erotic love, the romantic love. The romance that you want from your husband, the one that you want from your, I mean, the one that you want from that relationship, the one that makes you go crazy. Sometimes you don't think, right? I'm aligned. I know you can feel me. I know you can understand what I'm saying, right? That is what we're going to be talking about erotic love. And one thing I want to ask him, right? You know, this love thing is sometimes, it's, it's so amazing the way it happens sometimes. You can be surprised of, at some type of places that you meet, um, you find love. Today I was talking with my friend. <laughs> I was talking with uh, Gwendolyn actually. And we were talking like, okay, what are some of the crazy places that we can find love? <laughs> and someone mentioned the graveyard. People can meet people in the funeral service. Why? Because they are dying to meet you. They are dying for you to fall in love with them. That was so funny for me, right? You meet somebody at the funeral, <laughs> funeral service. Why? For a reason. Maybe because the person was just dying to meet you or dying to fall in love with you, right? So there are so many places that we meet people that we love unexpected places but today the one thing i want us to talk about excuse me i have a dry throat 
the one thing I want us to talk about today is <clears throat> at what age did you fall in love? Is there a perfect age for someone to fall in love? You know, so these days we see people, we see, a, you, you can see a little girl of 14 years getting married to somebody of 54, 60, somebody of 20 years, 25 years getting married to someone of 70. Is that love? You ask yourself, did this person really fall in love? But the question is, is there an age for love? Is there an age? What do you think? Do you think there is an age for love? We're going to come back and talk about that in a minute. Okay, we are here today. Ah, uh, I see. Oh my God, thanks. I see Giselle and Joe. I see our Emma. Thank you, ladies, for joining. I so appreciate it. I appreciate it. So please just put in the comments, okay? Um, what is the age? Do you think there's any right age for love? What do you think? For me, I don't know, but I don't think that there is any right age for love because it can happen at any time. I hear so, somebody that says, personally, 10 years gap because I would like to age with my partner. Okay. I can't say the person's name, but that's what, what the person, when the, somebody say, love has no age. Yeah, that's true. Love has no age. That's what I think too. But do you think there's an appropriate age for someone to fall in love? What age, at what age did you, did you fall in love with somebody? What, at what age did you fall in love with? Let me say your first love. 12, 10. You know, some movies you watch these days, you see people, some little kids at nine years, they're like, oh, mommy, I think I'm in love with somebody in my class. I like a guy. Sometimes I don't even know the difference between the like and the love they're talking about. Because they come and say, oh, mommy, I think I like this. This person in my class, I think I like her. There's this guy in my class, I think I like him. So the question I'm asking, do you like him or you love him? Because I don't understand, <laughs> you know? So what is that thing? Yeah, somebody said, I started feeling butterflies when I was in class five. Really? Oh my God. <laughs> Seriously? That is so interesting. Class five. Let me say class five. How old is that? You're not even up to 10 years, right? Class five is like, I would say maybe eight. Somebody said, no, there is... No absolute age to fall in love. Just pray they are old enough to understand what love's, love, love comes with. That is right. No, so, you know, sometimes we don't even know. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat. <clears> throat> I'm sorry. Sometimes you don't even know if what you're feeling is love, right? But you know, the feeling of love is like, it's like you see this person, right? You feel funny. There was this weird feeling. They call it like you have some butterflies in you. I heard about the word butterflies when we do, I was doing some uh, research in my master's program about love. And they were describing, one article was describing these butterfly feelings. That's when I even realized that truly I felt butterfly feelings. But I never knew that was, you know, what that was. You know, you just have this weird feeling. You want to see this person all the time. Like, <clears throat> you feel like, at times, at sometimes you feel like you, you're going to pass out when you see the person. Your heart starts pumping. Every adrenaline starts running, <laughs> start rising. Like, Sometimes you feel, you start scratching your head. You don't know what to do. You are so, you know, you are blushing. Everything is just happening. That's when you begin to ask yourself, why do I feel like that each time I meet this person, right? And you begin to wonder, is, is it love? You go to sleep, you cannot sleep. The person is already in your head, right? You keep thinking about this guy. You can't sleep. You want to sleep. And guess what? Sometimes it happens. You have not, the person does not even know. That is the worst thing, right? The person doesn't even know that you're having that feeling. Maybe the person is even interested in somebody else. You know, like in college, 
you are in class, maybe you have this guy that you're admiring, he's so cute or something, and he's not even having your time, he doesn't have your time, but you're there dreaming or imagining that, hey, one day he's going to say something, but he's with somebody else. What do you do? So please, I want to see your comments, okay? Share our page as you're watching, please. Share to your friends and family so that you can come together and we talk about something. We're not going to be here today for long because it's just an introduction. Next week, we're going to be talking all about the beginning of relationship from the dating process. Because this show, right, this show is all about love, how we can come together. <coughs> Excuse me. And build strong relationships, strong marriages. Some of us are married, but we don't have a relationship with our husbands. We have been married for so long, but we don't have that connection, that relationship with our husbands. We don't want to be like our parents back in the days where we just sit in the house and we just know that, oh, this is dad, this is mommy, this is mommy, this is daddy. And everybody's doing their own thing. No, they don't have connection. We cannot be like our parents. We need to bring connection into our marriages. If you are in a marriage that you don't have a relationship with your husband, that is not marriage. <clears throat> and I know that nobody wishes to have that kind of relationship, to have that kind of marriage. All of us got married, for those who are married here, is because we saw something. We fell in love. We saw something nice. We knew we could spend the rest of our life with that person. But suddenly things are changing. Like you're living with your brother in the house or your sister in the house. You don't feel anything. No, it is not right. It's because things happen, right? We have challenges. Maybe because of one challenge or the other, it has brought that gap. And you guys have, you know, have wandered apart because of one reason or the other. This is America. A lot of things happen. Sometimes mommy is working night shift. Daddy is working day shift. They don't meet. What do you expect? There's going to be a drift of attention. And trust me, if attention is not on you, it's somewhere else. So we need to make sure that we do something to bring back that attention, to refocus, to build those, that strong relationship that we want in our marriage. You, we must have relationships with our, our partners. You must have a relationship with your husband. You must have a relationship with your wife. So much so that when you sit like that, your husband is not there, maybe traveled or your wife is not there, you miss them. But guess what? Do you know some people don't miss their spouses? You may be shocked, but it does happen. It does happen. So guys, that is what we're going to be doing in this show. Bring everything together. We're going to talk about the important things that we need to look for. Those who are still single and searching. This is a platform where you will come and learn some important things pertinent things that you need to know before you say, I do. Back in the days, I don't know about you, but there are a lot of families, they are down with sickle cell kids. Why? Because they never did compatibility test. You get married, realize that you give birth to children who are sick, but that was not important then. Maybe we can consider that back in the days, it was because, let's say it, there was not much education on that. But these days, guys, we cannot afford to make that kind of mistake. Because if you are from a home or if you know a family member that they have issues with or they have kids with sickle cell, with sickle cell anemia, trust me, you don't want even your worst enemy to be in that situation. Take it from me. But why? Because of ignorance. So let us correct the mistakes that our parents did. That is why you have to be here to get all those little things. Remember, the way you start your courtship can affect the way your marriage will be. Whatever you tolerate and accept in your courtship, don't think it's gonna change in marriage. Marriage is more challenging than dating. For those who are still out there, let me give you news. It is, marriage is more challenging. We are all excited when they say, "Oh." Will you marry me? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We are so excited giving the fingers and oh, and then we are showing everybody I am out of the market, but you don't know. 
You don't know what is waiting for you. Yes. So here we're going to try. I'm going to try my best with your help to bring all the ideas we need. Okay. We will be talking everything from courtship to marriage and the spices, the flavors that we can add in our marriages so that what we can bring out what the splendors. Remember, it's all about the flavors and splendors of marriage. The way your food will taste depends on the flavors you put there. That's why some people like chocolate, right? Some people like vanilla. Some people like what? Strawberry flavor. Some people like their food to be very spicy. How do you like your food to be? Whatever you put in your relation, in your food will get you the taste that you want. So whatever thing you put in your marriage, whatever flavor you put in your marriage is going to give you the splendor or the taste that you want. If you want to be happy, you want this blissful marriage, this splendor. What is splendor? Joy, happiness, joy or something. Something that is like, wow. That's all we all was, right? So if you want to have that kind of marriage, guess what? You got to put the right flavors. And here, we're going to be helping. We're going to be helping you and I and everyone here to do what? To put just the right flavors. And guess what? Subtract the ones that will bring bitterness. Because a lot of people, believe it or not, have put some flavors that have brought in bitterness and make the marriage what? Sad. Without even knowing. Yes. So, my dear people, um, as I'm reading your, your comments there, yes, queens, you you must your most relationships with your you must have a relationship with your spouse. Yes, some people even jubilate when their spouse is not my dear. Some this is what baffles me. Somebody just made this comment here. Thank you, my sister. That some people are happy when their spouses are not around. Oh my goodness, that is terrifying. That is just to tell me that, hey, I am not in this marriage. Listen, let me tell you something. The fact that you are in the house, let me say, the Bible says that what? Be in the world, but not of the world. Some people are in their marriage, but they are not off their marriage. So it's just that, okay, hey, so last I'm married to Dr. Chinko. When I go everywhere, they say, oh, this is this is uh, uh, Dr. Chinko's wife. Oh, my gosh, she looks so pretty. Oh, my God, oh, Dr. Chinko is taking care of this girl. Meanwhile, there's fire in my house. I don't want to catch Dr. Chinko in the first place. Pretense all over the place. I want to get rid of him. There are people that don't want, they're so happy. How can you be happy when, you're, when your husband is not around? How can you be happy when your wife is away? Something is wrong. That is not marriage. There got to be a relationship. It means that relationship is lost. You are just there for what? For the kids? Guys, ladies, come on. Life is so short. Life is so short that we cannot afford to miss a single day without being happy. So if you're in a marriage that you don't want, you are happy when your spouse is around. It means that, hold on. Okay. If your spouse probably your your husband or your wife travels for one week and the rest of the of the 365 days is they are there with you, it means that you're not going to be happy. Oh, Jesus, that is that is terrible. So please, I understand that things happen like that, but it is because of one reason or the other. But we're going to find ways to fix that. We're going to find ways to help each and every one of us. No marriage is perfect. To be honest with you, if anybody tells you that there is a perfect marriage out there, tell them they are lying. Because there is no single marriage that is perfect. My pro Okay. Yep, we are back once more. So, I want to thank um, the person who sent that comment. Wait, that's Gwendolyn. That was a good one. Um, we must have a relationship with our spouses. Yes, we do. We must have a relationship with our spouses. Um, somebody said, set your standards during your courtship. That is so important. Thank you for that. Set your standard during your courtship because whatever standards you put, that is the same thing that's going to guide you in your marriage. You will take it to your marriage. 
Let me tell you something. People think that, especially us women, we have this problem. We ask, when we fall in love, it's like we are blinded. Even if something is so obviously negative about the person and you are told, you don't believe it. Sometimes you know it is there, but you are hoping. Oh no, I know he's going to change. He's going to change. It's just because we are seeing the courtship. When we get married, he's going to be home. Every day he's out. He doesn't call you. He will not sit and call you that, hey, babe, how are you doing today? I just want to check on you. If you are in a courtship and, you're, and, you're, and, you're, and your boyfriend is not calling you to check on you, don't think that's going to change in marriage. If you're in a courtship, right, he doesn't respect you. He speaks to you anyhow. It's not going to change. Sorry. If he doesn't respect your parents and your opinion, it will not change in marriage. So please set your standard. Those are the things that we call red flags. You have to be looking at the red flags and ask yourself, can you cope with it? If you can, then move on. But if you cannot, don't say they will change. They will not change. Instead, in marriage, you'll be surprised. You will see more negative things. That is where you need to handle them. So please don't. This is a good one. Set your standard during courtship. Somebody says the real marriage starts after the wedding. Absolutely. It is not about the wedding day. It's not about the ceremony. The ceremony is for everybody. Everybody will come and see how they'll come and look at your wedding gown. And we all know now. When I go to wedding, I, I want to see at the wedding. I want to see the wedding gown. I want to see how the decoration was. I want to see how pretty the bride was and everything. After that, guess what? It is you and that man in the house that knows what is going on. So the real thing, in short, that is the wedding. Marriage. The journey of marriage starts after the wedding. And that's just between two of you. All those guests are not there, right? That's where we start seeing the real color. Then someone said, then you should really be married if you are happy. Your spouse is not. <laughs> I guess you wanted to say that you should not really be married if you're happy when your spouse is around. I know, right? It's not around. Yeah. If, you're, if your spouse is not around, you're happy, then you're not married. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your comments. Love is not blind because it will get you in trouble. <laughs> Open your eyes. Yes, yeah, so one of my pastors said something. He said one of his preaching was preaching about marriage, all the challenges that people go through in marriage. And he said, they say love is blind. But marriage will open your eyes. When he said that, I cracked out because that is so true. Even though people say love is blind because you don't see the things, the negative things, but guess what? When you get in marriage, <laughs> whether you like it or not, your eyes will open. That's when you start seeing all the negativity. You're like, huh? Did you have this? Man, I never knew that you were so lazy. I never knew you were this dirty. I never knew you were. What were you doing during your courtship? You were not paying attention. You need to pay attention to the little things that matter. It's not all about love. Pay attention, guys. Please do. There's somebody saying that's so true. Sister, open your eyes to the red. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for all your comments. Please share, like our page. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, too. I love you all so much, and I'm loving your comments. Um, I have a comment from Shiza. She said, a snake shed its skin several times, but it's still a snake. <laughs> well, my sister, that's very true, right? A snake will shed the skin several times. Peel off that. Peel off that, but it's going to be a snake. I get your point where you're coming from. Like, somebody may say, okay, I have changed. Forgive me. I will not do that again. But they will still go back and do it again. But guess what? One thing I believe in life is that change is the only constant thing in nature. It's the only thing that is constant. People can change. By what means? It's not by it's not by violence. It's not by, I don't know what I can say. It is not by your might. Because truly, a human being does not have the ability or the power to change another human being. It's only God that can do that. That is why, to be honest with you, if you want your marriage to succeed, you must be a child of God. Because there are things that you will bear. You, it is your duty to pray for your partner. There are things that will happen. Sometimes they do those things they don't know. Yes, but guess what? 
But in such circumstances, we can just sit down, try to find out a way, and ask God for help. I believe that nothing is impossible with God. By the way, God is the one who instituted marriage. And he is one of the persons that say what? what? God said what? What God has joined together. Let no man put us on that. The Bible said what? A man will leave what? His mother and father cling to a woman and they will become one. Why did he institute that? So if he did, then he has the power to restore whatever thing is wrong with that marriage. We just have to trust him. Many times that we don't trust him. We want to do it in our own way. We take revenge because he has done this. I will do it. Right? It is, it is true. It's normal. We are women. We know how to revenge. We know how to say, ah, you have done this. I will deal with this man. I will deal with you. Because you have done this to me, I will make sure I make you feel the same pain. But guess what? Two wrongs never make a right. You are not different from the person who did that to you. So we just have to pray. I feel you and I understand. But guess what? We can make it work by the grace of God, not by our power. <sighs> not by our power. So let me see another comment. Some will say, I thought she would, she would change. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you all for your comments. These are so, your comments are so amazing and refreshing. I love all your comments. Please share. This is how this page is going to be, guys. This is how we're going to be doing here. We're going to be talking, keeping things real. Today is just an introduction, you know. So, um... I look forward for so many, many other days. Remember, we're going to be streaming live every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Again, I apologize for the letter today. It was just because of uh, some technical difficulties and we had. And again, it's my first time online, so don't blame me. <laughs> don't blame me. I again, so much love to you guys. Please, if you have anything you want to share, follow my page. We are on Instagram and Facebook subscribe to my youtube channel you can also email me if you have any personal thing that you don't you, you want us to like have something personal please you can also email me share your stories right the story you share here can help somebody else that is why we are in this safe space it's where we come together and talk about things that will help us in, in our marriages it is not only for women because women are not the only one that go through things it takes two to tangle Marriage is not done by one person. The two parties have to put energy. They have to put some love inside. They have to put the same amount of interest. It may not be equal, like 50-50, but there got to be something. We, we have to be in sync for something to happen. So please share with your brothers, share with your uncles, share with everybody you think is going to help. Everybody wants love. Everybody wants a, a happy home. Home is where the heart lies. If you love your husband, you want to be home. And if you if you are that man that love, you love your wife, you always want to go back home. You will not be staying outside. Even if you have to stay outside, you say, hey, babe, I have to, I have to go somewhere, but I'll be right back. There's that constant communication. But you, some people just leave and they don't even know where their spouses are in, in 24 hours. Oh, he left in the morning. And he's coming back 4 a.m. in the morning. And you don't know. Ha, Jesus. You don't know where they were. What, happened? what if something happened? You know. So please, let us come together and see how we can make things work. Right? <laughs> Thank you, mother. My stepmother is here. Much love to you, Mrs. Tiko. I love you so much. Thanks for being my support. Thank you, glorious Queen Tara. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all. Share the page. I see my sister Babis. She's there. Thank you so much. Our may. I see some of our elite members and our launch your powerhouse members. I thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Somebody say what? What are some of the boundaries that you place with your spouse in order to maintain your individualism? That's a good question. So um. When you say what are some of the boundaries that you 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 place with your husband to maintain some individualism, right? The truth is that when it comes to marriage, there is nothing like individualism. 
Maybe I don't know from what direction you're coming from. I don't understand, but what I'm trying to perceive here, and correct me if I'm wrong, is like, what are some of the boundaries that you, you have to place with your husband so that you can have your privacy? That's that's my sister and Lara. And Lara, is that what is is that exactly what you're saying? Like, in order to maintain your personality, to, to preserve your personality or your privacy, is that what you're asking? Please let me know if if that's what you're talking about. So I can answer your question. But if that's what you're talking about, to be honest with you, when it comes to marriage, there is nothing like privacy. There is nothing like privacy. Guess what? What does the Bible say about marriage? The two shall become one. And there's a common say we say one plus one in marriage is the only mathematics that we have never understood. One plus one equals one. Okay, she said what? In the form of self-care. I still don't I still don't understand what she mean by in the form of boundaries as personal space, e.g. phones. Oh, okay. My, Giza has said boundaries such as such as personal space like phone. Ladies, <clears throat> let me clear my throat on this one. Right. To be on the safe side, please do not touch your husband's phone. Same with husbands. I'm not saying anything is going to happen or they're hiding anything. But let me let me, let's let's be real here. Let's keep it real, right? There is a say that what you don't know doesn't hurt you. If you go fishing for something in that phone, if you're going there that you want to see something, you may see something that doesn't seem like something, or something that is not something but seems like something, and you bring a problem. So your phone is your your phone is your, your private property, right? It's your personal property. It's your privacy. That's true. But it doesn't mean that if your phone is... Child, fine. It doesn't mean... Sorry, guys. It doesn't mean that if my husband's phone is ringing, I say, oh, babe, your phone is ringing. Let me bring your phone. Hey, don't touch my phone. Don't touch my phone. I said, don't touch my phone. That is a problem. Then you start telling me that something is wrong. But you, my phone... It's my personal property. My husband does not get in my phone. It's not like he cannot get in my phone or I cannot tell him that this. But it becomes a problem where you put password that they cannot ask access. Why? Not because you want them to access your phone. Let me tell you something. I heard a story. A man had a heart attack. He had a heart attack and I had to, had to be rushed to the hospital. The wife was there. She didn't know where she kept her phone. You know, us women now, we always throw phones everywhere. The man's phone was right, was right there. But guess what? She did not know the password to her husband's phone. And because of that delay, the husband passed out. The question is, why in the world did he have a password that the, that the wife does not know? I have a password in my phone, and my husband does. But we know the password. Sometimes it's just to protect it against these kids. So because of that little thing, the man died. For me, that's not privacy. It's not privacy. Trust your husband. Trust your wife. It's your personal thing. It's not like he's going to be checking your phone every day that, oh, let me see what you're doing with your phone or something. No, you don't do that. That is their privacy. My phone is my privacy. I do what I want to do with it. Right? But let me tell you something. What goes around comes around. If you are doing something negative on that phone, the person does not have to read it all. Somehow, somehow, it will come to the person. So your phone, I agree with you, is your personal property. They don't have to ask you, like, let me see your phone, let me do this. No. But you don't have to keep your password away from them because something may happen that is a real emergency. And in, like this case, I told you, that was a real story. And the person died for what? Because of password? It's not necessary, okay? It's all about trust. Like Exactly, my sister. It's all about trust. Okay, somebody said, my husband does not touch my phone. No matter what, what does healthy, yeah, no matter what, it's just, it's just, I mean, just understand that it's your, it's, it's, it's your private thing, you know. Somebody say, trust that is broken. How do you repair that? That is a very good question because if trust is broken, it is so hard. Especially if you trusted that person with your whole heart. But let me tell you something. I am a Christian. I am a believer. And I know that there is nothing impossible with God. 
let me tell you something. <clears throat> Excuse me. As growing up, I had anger issues. That when I get angry here, if I don't take revenge, mm -mm. and my husband knew that even when we were dating, he told me one day that you have this is your anger, you need you need to do something about it. When I got married, my husband is the type that he doesn't talk too much. Before he says one, I'm in ten, right? But then he would just be looking at me. Then what he, when I finish talking, you ask me that. So you think that because you have said all that, something will change? So I came to realize that ah, I'm the one stressing. I said, ah, this boy is as calm as ice. I'm the one vibrating and stressing. Why am I stressing? The more I grew closer to God, I started telling him, Father, give me a way to handle my emotions. And if you ask that wholeheartedly, he will help you. So what am I trying to say? Even the things that are so difficult for you to do, if you put them in God's hands, he will do it. But if you want to do it on your own, it's not going to happen. Learn how to forgive and let go. The problem is that we forgive, but we don't let go. And if you don't let it go, trust cannot be restored. And a relationship that trust is not there, you are wasting time because guess what? Soul angel will come one day and say, hey, lady, yes, do you know I saw your husband so, 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 so? And you'll be like, eh, I knew it. Anybody will be able to break your marriage because you don't trust. Am I saying that things don't happen? They do happen. Am I saying that trust are not broken? They are. But what am I saying here? I'm saying that you can ask God to help you to restore that trust. Only him can do that. No human being can do that. Even that man, no matter whatever gift, whatever vacation he takes you there, if God doesn't help you. So the only thing you need to do is that God, please. Sometimes when I'm very angry with my husband, let me tell you. Like I told you, no marriage is perfect. When I'm very angry with him, I learned how to stop talking when I'm angry. It's a very difficult thing, but I had to learn it. And when I stopped talking, before I would stop talking and I will not talk to him like three days. But what am I doing now? When I stop talking, I go to God. I say, I say, Father, give me peace. That's all. I, when I'm angry, that's all I do. I say, Lord, give me peace. I need peace. And I tell him why I'm angry. He already knows anyways. I tell him that this is what your son did. And I'm very angry, but I need you to give me peace because I know you don't want me to be angry because I know you don't want me to do something rash. Give me peace and give me knowledge, understanding on how to solve this issue, how to tackle it. I learned how to calm them before talking to my husband. Because every, but guess what? Every now and then I will spark, right? I will spark and before I'm like, okay, I didn't have to do that. But once in a while, I'll see, forget that I am, you know, everybody's human. I'll see, forget that and do like answer impulsively. But when you answer impulsively, you get in trouble. These men know how to turn things around. They will turn around because our mouths are so sharp. We'll say things that we don't have to say. Then at the end of the day, you turn around and be apologizing. So please, what I'm saying, my friend, is that God can help you through that. No human being can. They, we, we human beings, we can only advise you, tell you some things to do. We'll give you ways that you can try to help. But guess what? The final result is in the Bible. It's God that can help you. We will help you with ways. But God will seal that. He will restore that trust that you had. He will not only restore it, but he will restore your trust and make your husband to be that that you want if you put everything in him. <clears throat> I see you, niece. Thanks for joining. Somebody say, what does the Bible say about trust in, about trust in relationship to marriage? Yes, the, the Bible, in, when it comes to marriage, the Bible talks, you have to trust your spouse, right? The Bible says what? A man should love his wife as Christ loves the church. And he says to the woman, be submissive to your, to your husband. Women are so angry when they hear this thing that be submissive, right? But the most difficult one, I can be submissive to you without loving you, Sefo. But guess what? You and man, you have that obligation that you must, it's a command that God has given. You must love me. He has given you that command. You must love your wife. But the command or the order that the woman has is what? Submit. But we are always complaining. 
Our own is even easy. Our own is so easy to submit. The one that is even difficult is, is, is the mass owner he has to love. I guess God had a reason here. God really had a reason to say that a man should love because these men are so stubborn. But we women, when we love, we love. But the men, they, sometimes they are flippant. Maybe that's the reason why he told, he gave that order to that man to love. I don't know, but I have to ask my husband about this one. <laughs> Is, I need to get this revelation why God said to the man that you love and the woman that you submit. <laughs> yes, but, and Lara, my dear, when, when it comes to love, when, when it comes to marriage, the Bible is clear about that, about the love, everything. Remember, God said we should trust in him, right? And God says to the man, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Marriage, you need to trust each other. If you don't trust each other, it's not going to work. Even in our normal relationship, take about your friend. If you don't trust your friend, that relationship cannot work. You'll always be suspicious. Ah, Jesus, trust is such, if broken trust is such a terrible thing because you will always be suspecting. Even if I leave the house that I'm going to Walmart, my husband will, will be looking at, ah, she just left here. It's, it's a one hour. It's one man, not just 25 minutes. Why is she not back? You start having ideas. Where oh, am my God? When you don't have trust in your, in your any relationship, even with your friends, it's such a bad thing. So let us try. Let us try. But guess what? <clears throat> we'll be talking more about these things. All, all of, I love all of your comments. I love all of your questions. Listen, we will be talking all about this. We'll be answering these questions and bringing out ways. We'll be coming up with ways that we can, you know, build trust in marriages. You know, how we can, you know, some of those things that, that women feel inside, some of us feel betrayed and we don't know how to handle it. Some people, honestly, they're happy when their, their, their spouses are away because of the tension that they feel all the time. We will, we will come up with ways, tips on how we can do that. That's why I said in my in my the video that went out, my introductory video, that there are so many couples out there that have lost the very purpose of marriage. The flames of love is gone. Sometimes you ask yourself, is this a person I got married to? <sighs> How the hell did I end up with you? But that was somebody that you were madly in love with. But you cannot explain. That is somebody that if your parents had told you that, ha, over my dead body, would you marry this person? You would have said, mama, you will only die. You would have said, papa, hmm, you will only die. Oh, because if me, I don't marry this person, over my dead body too. But then you find yourself, you guys are like cats and dogs. What's going on? tricks of the enemy the devil does not like marriage that is one thing we have to understand the devil does not like marriage because what two couple if, if two people are in agreement what they can do hmm. sure let's leave that for another day when two people agree on something they succeed especially when it comes to marriage because god has ordained that union and guess what the Bible says what? He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. And those what? He obtains favor from God. <laughs> Jesus obtains what favor. So the devil is doing everything to break that marriage. So that what? That favor will not be there. That favor will not follow that man. Men don't even know. They don't know that we are the ones giving them favor. Hmm. They don't even know. That's why when you treat your wife badly, what betides you? Anyway, that's a story for another day. We have a lot of things we're going to be talking about on this platform a lot. Somebody say, that hearsay is a big problem in marriage. <laughs> when there is no trust, that's true, my sister. When I'm upset, I go mute on my husband and I meditate and pray about it exactly. Then I find a good time to talk to him about it. That is the best way my sister that is the best way that is the best way we should go about it because when you are upset there is a high probability you're going to cause more chaos than good what you will say at that time will be worse than what your husband did we are women now we know ourselves so it's better you go quiet go sit in the corner have a conversation one thing i do a lot is that i sing when i'm angry i sing I sing a lot of gospel songs. Before I know it, I'm done. I'm, I'm already like at peace. I start singing all my gospel. I start singing praise and worship. Before I know, I am 
I have calmed down. That helps me a lot. Find something that helps you to calm down. <clears throat> okay. Now we are almost at the end. We have just a few minutes left. Let me see if I have any other comments here. Make God the third person in your home. Actually, make God the first person, the foundation in your home. Yes. Only you, your husband, or you, your wife, and God. And God should be the foundation because when he is, nothing nothing can be shaken because both of you always go back to him my partner always knows when i am upset and he knows what upsets me <laughs> that's good it's good he knows that's so true <laughs> my friend i hear you very stubborn well yeah this man this man can be stubborn sometimes <laughs> love without trust is a terrible it's terrible it's a root cause for divorce yes it is it is it is one can move a hundred, a thousand, and two thousand. Okay. All right, my people. If I did not reach your comment today, I'm sorry. Bible says no man, no man, anything but love. Oh, no man, anything but love. It's a commandment from God to both men and women. Love conquer all pain. That is true. It conquers all pain. I just want to thank you all for joining today. Um Please continue to um, share my page, like my page. It was so much of a pleasure for me to be here today. And I appreciate your time. I know you took our time from your busy schedule to be here with me today. Rendezvous next Sunday at 5 p.m. We're going to talk before the, the week runs out. I'm going to send out what we're going to be talking about so that you can prepare yourself, prepare your comments to come and, you know, let us have this fun together. Please do not forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel at the Blissful Corpus Corner. Don't forget to, you know, press that notification bell so that you will not miss any episode. And um, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I love you all. Until next time, I remain your humble host, Soul Angel. See you and have a great day.